Ms. Murphy, on behalf of Swinburne and our guests, I thank you for your remarks and blessing. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my privilege to introduce Professor Ian Wallace, Vice-Chancellor of Swinburne University of Technology. Minister, uh, Senator Patterson, Chancellor and members of the Council of Swinburne University of Technology, distinguished guests, colleagues and members of the Swinburne community. There are few occasions in our lives when we can claim direct involvement in the making of history. Today, however, we have the collective privilege of participating in a genuinely historic event. With the formal opening of the Lilydale campus of Swinburne University of Technology, Swinburne at Lilydale, the outer eastern region of Melbourne finally takes its appropriate place on the map of Australian higher education. The sequence of events that has brought us to this great day has been frequently colourful, always incident-packed, and has involved a mammoth cast of varied players. Some of the significant roles and striking incidents will be recalled by our distinguished speakers this evening. It should give us all particular pleasure that the opening of Swinburne at Lilydale is occurring at a time when the preoccupations of the higher education system center on financial contraction rather than development and expansion. The region is one of a very few areas that have been provided with funds for growth we should feel genuinely privileged. The other major current concern of Australia's universities is the Higher Education Review chaired by Roderick West. The results of this enterprise are likely to determine the shape of not only higher but tertiary education for many years to come. This is not the occasion for extended comment but I do believe that the fundamental principles underlying the structure and mode of operation of Swinburne at Lilydale are likely to find favour in the review's recommendations on how the nation can afford to meet future demand for growth and its obligations to Australia's regions. A contemporary university is only as good as its leader. In Richard Pratt, Swinburne has the immense good fortune to possess a foundation chancellor whose abilities, experience and interests endow him with all of the characteristics required for a leadership role in a university of technology in contemporary Australia. These include a desire and ability to further strengthen and deepen relationships between the university and industry and business, to nourish the social conscience of the university and maintain our commitment to monitoring and meeting the needs of the community, to foster the inter internationalization of our programs and activities wherever mutual benefit with other nations can be established, to encourage the maintenance of intellectual and cultural breadth within a technological focus, and above all, to give a clear and firm lead in the pursuit of excellence in all that we do. Under Richard's leadership in the period since 1992, Swinburne has progressed and achieved mightily. Richard concluded his inaugural address at his installation with the invitation, let's get on with it. Dedication to prompt and decisive action in the pursuit of excellence has characterized our institutional performance ever since. That this splendid building complex provides an example of Australian architectural creativity at, at its peak, and such a striking focus for the Lilydale community is attributable to the application of Richard's philosophy and to his very considerable personal generosity. Chancellor, it gives me great pleasure to invite you to address us. <laughs> 